All right, welcome back to theCUBE here at IBM, IBM Edge. I'm Alex Williams of SiliconANGLE here with Steve Fawcett. Steve? Hello. I was just trying to get an idea what you do, and, <laughs> and you said you don't have a day job, but you nope. do have a night job. No, I don't have any kind of job. You don't, have a, you don't even have a night job. Yeah. So, when yeah. you're gamefully, when you're gamefully uh, doing yeah. something. I employ myself. You employ yourself. Yes. And what is that that you do? Yeah. So, so basically, I, I write um, and speak at events. And I also organize events, so uh, the the basically the sum of it is that I'm doing a lot of writing of um, you know uh, technical articles. I also do a lot of blogging and just sort of whatever I feel like. Um, I speak at events like this. I'll be having I have a session tomorrow here at uh, Edge talking about uh, server virtualization integration. I also have a seminar series that I'm doing with about 30 cities this year, mm -hmm. uh, doing an all-day sem seminar on. Um, infrastructure for server virtualization, so storage servers and networks uh, for, for virtual servers. And um, and then I also organized the Tech Field Day event series, which is kind of, you know, in a way it's a way to sort of give back to the community that supports me because it allows me to bring in a whole bunch of really great people, you know, a dozen different independent bloggers and put them in front of different companies. Uh, you know, and talk about you know whatever the companies are doing. So we've done Wi-Fi, we've done data center networks, we've done storage, and we've got a security event coming up pretty soon. So a lot of different stuff. When, when is the hey, next John event? MacArthur. Oh, hey, John, where'd I, you come from? I, I, you snuck I, up on I, me. I, yeah, I slid back from lunch. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Here we are. Yeah. So, so, so to, oh, the next event coming up is uh, is. Uh, yeah. So my next event is uh, Wireless Field Day Three, which is in September, and okay. so it's all Wi-Fi companies. Okay. And let me tell you, as an enterprise guy. Learning about Wi-Fi has been super cool because uh, first, the Wi-Fi people are actually really cool people. I mean, you know, they, and, and they and they work on totally different challenges than we see in the enterprise. But there's such a parallel there, yes. and so if you're like excited about software-defined networking and like separating the control plane from the data plane, well, wireless did that. They didn't do it in exactly the same way that like OpenFlow is doing it, but they've got their own twist on technology. And I think it really would be great if more enterprise people kind of saw what's going on in the wireless space. And it would certainly be great if some of the wireless people saw what's going on in the enterprise, because I think we could probably learn from each other. Yeah, I'd like to see some enterprise, enterprise class service on wireless. Uh. There's, the, we, we, there's some really cool things. So we did, um, uh, so I organized uh, blogger events for the Ruba Airheads conference. Yeah. And we did this, uh, this great round table discussion. And it was really eye-opening to me, for example, I see, um, I see an iPad uh, on the other side of the camera. Right. Um, one of the things that they were talking about is how things like AirPlay and AirPrint work in the enterprise. I had never considered the implications of AirPlay on enterprise Wi-Fi networks, but What are some wow. of the impacts? Well, the, the thing is, a lot of enterprises are now bringing in um, like an Apple TV and connecting right. it to their projector. Well, in order for AirPlay to work, the iPad needs to be able to talk directly to that Apple TV. Well, enterprise Wi-Fi is not designed to allow endpoint devices to talk to each other ah, or to see each other. So right. they basically have to create special rules for Bonjour that allow these devices to see each other. And then they're kind of thinking, well, what about like, do we want your iPad to be able to see the projector on the floor below you? Well, no. So we have to figure out a way to filter that out and like have you only see the printers and the, it, it's, Totally weird stuff, and when you hear about it, you're like, "Oh, of course." Yeah, but yeah. you might not have thought about it. Yeah, I, you really start to see that when you uh, talk to the customers out there about what yep. really are their, their, you know, what are they, what are their challenges. I was in a, uh, in a uh, discussion yesterday at uh, H at HP at HP's event, and they were talking just about security issues and, mm -hmm. and authentication issues. Oh yeah, just very very basic issues that they're, they're struggling with every day. And there's some really cool stuff coming down the pike. I mean, I don't want to have this all be about Wi-Fi, but yeah, no, honestly, there's some really cool Wi-Fi technology. 802.11u is this whole new um, hotspot technology and authentication technology, and it's going to change the way your iPad and your notebook and your iPhone and Android, it's going to change the way all that stuff works mm -hmm. with hotspots, and that's next year. So when you look at those events that you know you go to and the ones you organize, and yep. then you look at you know look at an event like this as a contextual point, yeah. what are the connections that you're seeing? Well, it's it's interesting because uh, so many of the independent events. I mean, 
you know, I've spoken at Interop for years. Um, right. I love Interop. I, you've been, I'm sure you've been oh, there a few times. Oh, yeah, a few times. <laughs> and yet, so many of these independent events like that are gone. And now, events uh, like this have so much more presence in the industry. Yeah, so stores, would, would you come to an event like this or EMC World or, or Storage Networking World yeah, as exactly, an example? Yeah, exactly, because people go to, I mean, and, and, and I mean, there's people all around us right. at the IBM event. And so, I mean, IBM, I think it was really smart for them to put together their three disparate events into one storage event. I mean, this is very like EMC World or, you know, VM World or any of these, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's honestly a lot like Aruba Airheads, even though obviously it's a totally different mm. market because this is what people go to now, Yeah. you know, and uh -huh. there's a lot of crossover, you know, right. between what used to happen at the independent events and what now happens here. Do you see, do you see a role for an independent <laughs> event? I do, um, but it's a little more challenging because, you know, I mean, remember, you know, back in the days of like Computer Shopper and, and you know, Com Comdex and Interop and stuff, it was, it was really different. People were going to those events to shop. People don't come to events to shop so much anymore. People come to events now to explore and to get connections. And I don't know how it's going to work in the future. It's interesting. One of the things that's been interesting for me is that uh, I've talked to a number of people who came and said they, they brought their teams down to get educated. So the education component of this, mm -hmm. This I think substantially more oh, than, yeah. than than what you might have seen at, at some other sessions where the, the education is there, but it's kind of lightweight. Yeah, you know. It's I'm also seeing how you know with a lot of what we're talking here about is like IT everywhere. Right? Yeah. I mean IT can be anywhere. Oh, absolutely. You know, that, I mean that's on, that's on, the Wi-Fi lesson. Yeah. Is IT everywhere. And it's like you know, um, and any you know, a cell phone is a node. This this new la this laptop is a node, right? So. IT will be anywhere, and that means then increasingly there's communities that are kind of establishing around data points, right? They're starting to, you know, there's connection points. That to me seems like opportunity for events, right? Mm -hmm. It's like because now we're starting to move into this whole new world where we're where we're where we're kind of developing new communities, absolutely every day, yeah. you know, and they build and build and build and build, and those actually can become, you know, have enough critical mass for for well, events. So yeah. I, and that's one of the things that. I, really interested in your perspective on this. One of the things I hope to see out of this is make this a sustained event. So we could do the comparison to the EMC world. Absolutely. So we're at 1600 or so today, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, at, at this event. Um, you know, is it going to be a 5,000 person event in, in two years time? Are they going to continue the investment across? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And, and I actually, I think that my biggest piece of advice to IBM in building this event mm -hmm. and, and also in doing the other things like, I mean, what we're doing right here, you know, we're on, we're on, you know, on the air with live streaming video. IBM needs to not have this be a self-serving event. And I'm not saying that it is, but I'm saying that they need to be careful not to make it that way. The reason that people love VMworld, for example, is because it's all about serving the needs of the attendees. Mm -hmm. And if IBM can do that, if IBM can serve the needs of people who use IBM storage, then I don't see the, the, that this event can't grow and grow. And that goes down to the education. It goes down to everything. I mean, if, they're, if their metrics are organized around what do people want to see and, and, and what value are people getting from the event, right. then I think they're going to have a successful event on their hands. So give me two, sec two, two minutes on... What was best for Well, you? actually, we need about okay. one minute okay, because one minute. we're going to okay. have to we're going to have to. Okay, so on. One, give me yeah. one minute of, of what's the best uh, thing that you've taken away from this. Oh, the best thing that I've taken yeah. away from this. Okay, I I really enjoyed this morning. There was um, some sessions on the future of, of storage. I I really enjoyed what they said about uh, solid state storage and the long term evolution of storage architecture. That stuff is cool. I think it's really valuable for people to come and hear like technology vision for the future of that. I also really enjoyed the Watson session just because it was really cool to see yeah, how that makes Watson cool. work. Yeah. But there you go, there you go. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. So. yeah, I also, I mean, th what I really like about this event is how forward looking it is. You know, the, those keynotes with Jeff Jonas, yeah, you know, Jeff. With, with distinguished fellows, that's really the, that, that's the thing that will like, I think would, for me at least, bring me here. Yeah. And, and remember, IBM invented everything. Right. And that's the truth. Yeah. And and it's not that's not like just a flippant remark. IBM is basically a research monster, or at least has been in the past. That's and I think good. it's important for them to demonstrate that they still are and well, that they're and, at the forefront. And that was I think one of my big takeaways is 
is I, I because they've acquired some small early stage companies and they've incorporated them into yep. some of the solutions, but the investment that they've been making to, um, internally and Jeff Jonas was a good example yeah. of that. I, I think is yeah. just well, he's great. just a great speaker. So well, he is just a great speaker. Well, we're going to have to get going, Steve. Thank you very much yep. for taking some time to be on the air with us. We're live here at IBM Edge. Now we're going to go live to HP Discover in Las Vegas with Dave Vellante. Dave, take it from here.